so much, Sing to Live, for being here with us this morning. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, where we serve a still-speaking God. If you call God she or he or spirit, you're welcome here. If you're old in years and young at heart, you're welcome here. If you are old soul and a young body, you're welcome here. If you need a community to embrace your children, you are welcome here. If you need to be forgiven, or if you need to forgive someone, you are welcome here. This is the place where we reject racism, fight injustice, share our resources. This is the place where we pray out loud and in silence. We love old hymns, classical, and gospel music. We welcome those who are gay, straight, bisexual, transgender, or questioning. We embrace diversity. We are not a melting pot, but rather a delicious stew. And we welcome you to be here to worship with us. This is our Sabbath. So take a deep breath and let us worship the Lord. Sorry, but just so we get all the nuances. Mark 2, verses 1 through 12. When he returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? Is this blasphemy? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Morning, friends. Can you hear me? Yes. I am grateful to be here in worship with you today, to be invited to share this message with you. I have spent much of my adult life concerned with the human experiences of military service and post-military re-entry journeys. I have served in uniform as a military chaplain, a ministry, ministry that I continue continue to understand to be a singular privilege in my life. From that vantage point, I know that for many of us who have served in the military, our coming home process takes time, it takes compassion, it takes community, that the healing that is needed is not only for our physical bodies, but for our whole selves. The scripture that we have heard told here from the second chapter of Mark's Gospel uh, may be familiar. It, it has, as uh, Maureen has already illustrated for us, all of the dramatic components of a good action movie. It's got a big ticket Hollywood celebrity <laughs> that everybody wants to go and see. 
It's got a helpless victim in trouble. It's got heroes banding together to accomplish the mission. It's got bad guys who are up to no good, making things difficult. It has an inspiring sequence where our team busts through the roof and rappels down into the crowd, surprising everyone culminating with breathtaking metamorphosis that leaves everyone amazed. It's a drama we've seen again and again in every superhero thriller. But today, friends, I want us to tell a different kind of story, not another stale, heroic cliche. Because Veterans Day sometimes becomes about promoting hero narratives. And I will testify that I knew many and know many heroic men and women in uniform. But we do not honor their bravery and their sacrifices and their service to our nation when we perpetuate simplistic hero stories. We honor each other through authentic, patient, loving, resolved relationships. Today I wish us to attend to the death of the costs of war by engaging complicated human stories in which folks face real challenges, in which families and communities face real challenges, in which religious folks mean well but so often miss the opportunity staring them in the face, in which thousands of small missions are accomplished, and even then we struggle to acknowledge and embrace the healing that can transform our lives. Church, I lay all of this humbly out before your hearing in hope that we will not only turn our momentary attention to this text, but that the Word of God will turn our hearts to the possibilities previously perceived as impossibilities. That is my Family, will you pray with me? God who is present with us in all places, in all times, in all circumstances, we ask that our worship this morning be not of routine and habit, but be an encounter with your living power. Lord, you are our foundation, our sanctuary, our provider and protector. Socially, economically, and politically. 
Paralysis was not only a brokenness of the physical body, it was a breaching of interpersonal, communal, and moral government. Paralyzed folks weren't included. They weren't allowed in places where you could go to worship. Weren't even seen as being human by those passing by. We realize perhaps that this is not history. This is not the telling of a different time when things were different. Oh, church, even now today, we so often persist in treating suffering this way, wanting to leave it outside the holy places, even as children of God suffer in much the same. There's another quick observation in the text that could serve similarly as a critique to our contemporary moment. The text says, because of the crowd, because of the crowd, they could not bring him in. Too many churches today are so very occupied worrying about their attendance numbers that they fail to recognize that crowdedness is not a matter of numbers. It's a matter of disposition. It's not the number of people that's the obstruction in this story. It's a mentality of entitlement. It is a posture of privilege that keeps folks inside and leaves others outside. These seekers of healing, they don't bust through the roof for fun, not for dramatic flair. They get in this way because the very structure, the very structure of the gathering is excluding, is prohibiting their entrance into it. It's worth considering. Is there room for the paralyzed in this church. Now you know this community better than me, so I offer this question only as a matter of invitation to reflection. I ask this question because I have been a part of many communities that were expert crowds. Couldn't get out of their own way, had a hard time making sense of all that banging coming from up above on the roof. Let's begin by asking, what's paralyzing folks? What's keeping folks from being able to move themselves? Have you ever been stuck? Stuck in anger? Stuck in fear, stuck in grief, in depression? Was church a place that accompanied you in that season of your life? Have you ever been subjected to cruelty, to abuse, to prejudice, to projections that demeaned your person? Was church a place that counteracted, that refuted, that destigmatized, that pushed back against the powers and principalities of the world for your sake? I don't know if these questions speak to the experiences of this community, but I ask them because I know too many children of God right now who are exiled, who are destitute, who are shamed, who are impoverished by systems of power that are inconsistent, oh, are antithetical, are hostile to the meaning of the gospel. And I hear too many good talking Christians out here rationalizing and compromising and sanitizing the message. And so I ask, 
do we have room for the paralyzed in our midst? Church, the text tells us that it was not only their passive behaviors that showed them to be crowded, but it was the words of the most vocal, the authorities in their midst, who spoke against access, against relationship, against healing. How is it that churches filled with good people speak against becoming beloved community? Well, some folks speak to disqualify themselves. They say, I'm not a leader, or I'm not an expert, I'm, I'm not the pastor, or, I'm not the counselor. Other folks disqualify the work itself. They say, we, we can't just be open to just anybody, though that would be chaos. No, no, we, we don't have time for that right now. It's not on the agenda. No, we can't do that. The budget is already set. We don't have the resources for that. But some other folks disqualify the power of healing itself. They say, there's nothing we can do. That must be someone else's problem. There's nothing we can do. Church, knowing your limitations is not the same thing as being resigned to. It's always going to be that way. So if you're hung up on what you're not, remember that beautiful description of the body of Christ. Don't be the ear wanting to be the eye. If you're an ear, be that ear. Quit with all that I'm not and get going with I am. Amen. If you're hung up on what the church can't do, what the church doesn't have, I want you to remember Peter and John in the book of Acts, in a hurry, busy trying to get somewhere, getting stopped by someone else suffering paralysis. Remember what they said to that brother. They said, what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What I have, I give you. Not I don't, not I can't, not sorry I ain't got that, not you're out of luck. What I have, I give you. And just in case, church, just in case we get it twisted to thinking that we're the providers, that we're the source, that we're the charity program, that we're the stewardship campaign, that we're the ones in control. What I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what we've got, church. That's who we are. It's not about silver and gold. It's about being vessels. It's about being vessels, cracks in all, vessels of God's love in the face of suffering. Cracked vessels. There is not a faith community gathered today, this week, this month, this year that doesn't have somebody who's cracking right now. <laughs> and if you're cracking, you don't need somebody coming up to you 
looking like their surfaces are all smooth as a baby's backside, trying to come up to you, saying things like, everything's going to be all right. Telling you, God doesn't give you more than you can carry. Telling you, God needed an angel in the choir. Telling you, God needed another flower in the heavenly garden. Trying to fix you. Trying to smooth you over. Trying to make it seem like you were anything other than crap right now. Church, I know this because I have been the one perishing. Listening to someone play game. And I have been the one pretending. Hiding my own cracks, my own brokenness. Hiding my own vulnerability. Trying to fix somebody who I thought had a problem. Thinking I was the fixer. Don't forget your mat, church. When healing comes in your life, yes, stand up, walk, dance a little bit if you need to. But don't forget your mat. Don't forget your mat when you go home. Why do I have to take it? just get to go home, leave all that behind. I mean, I'm good now. I mean, I'm, I'm good enough that I can pass. You know, folks used to look at me and see me as nothing more than my brokenness. So now that I'm fixed up,
there is an unnamed person. We are the paralyzed one. We are the friends. We are the ones already gathered who are so into our own stuff to realize how it is that we're part of the problem. We have been and can be any of these characters in the story. Can you see? Can you see, church, how this has something to do with coming home from military service? Something to do with trying to find your place, <clears throat> trying to find home, trying to get what you need. If church is pretending to be a sanitized, civilities, sanctified, we're all acting like we're nothing but smooth. Folks with cracks aren't going to come around. And if they do, by accident, they're not going to stay around here. Veterans talk to other veterans, not because our experiences are identical, but because we have endured something and we know we will never be the same. We have endured something, and we know we will never be the same. If you are a civilian, don't know anything about military service. Don't disqualify yourself. Be who you are. Give. Give what you have. Demonstrate your devotion to a Savior justice and healing happen in our world. Demonstrate your devotion in the way that you see someone. That you hear someone. That you come alongside someone and visit for a while. Don't forget your map. Even if you long to distance yourself from the memory of what you have endured. And even if all kind of folks are telling you, get over that. You're done with that, move on. Church, hear Jesus' instruction about how to recover. Take your mat. 